You always need a paint strainer when you have an emergency. <laughs> Let me show you how I make this work. But I also have things that do double duty like these. See it's turning red here and it's radiating quite a bit of heat. Radiant heat here and this will push heat out into the Hi, room. Hi, it's Eunice from Theory of Simple. Thank you for joining me today. And if you're new here, my videos are all about home, car, plane, or train. I'll have you prepared for just about anything. And today I'm going to have you prepared to stay warm when it's cold outside if the power goes out. I look at being prepared a little bit like an insurance policy. I have to have it. I don't want to use it, but I'm really glad I have it when I have to use it. So for me, being prepared is just like that. I hope I don't have to have it, but I have everything prepared just in case. But that also means about twice a year, I need to go through everything and make sure that it's all in working order and charged. And as I opened up my emergency kit the other day, it wasn't all ready to go and I'm really glad that I checked on it so I could get things like new gas cans and power up batteries and solar lights and lights that I needed just in case the power goes out and I needed to have something to keep me comfortable. So this is your clue to start doing that as well. And if you don't have a kit, this is your time to start pulling things together just in case one of those winter emergencies hits your area. end of this video, I'm going to go over a few things that your children or grandchildren can do to help you and to help themselves be prepared in these emergency situations. Well, as we have seen recently in the news with the earthquake in Japan and that small earthquake in New York and just some of the different weather systems that have been going around throughout the United States and Europe, really kind of all over, there's been a lot of disruption of what our convenient lives are used to, which is electricity, gas, and clean water. And we wanna be prepared in case those things get impaired and we don't have that comfortable life. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover things about winter, things that are gonna be necessary for us to stay alive if it's cold outside and how to be able to keep us warm and keep us fed during those cold weather emergencies. All right, the number one thing is safety. And for me, that means you need to have a carbon monoxide detector in your home. And many of us have them in our home. They might be built in and attached to our electrical system, but that means that the electrical system's out if there's a battery backup and it's good, it will still work. If not, I like to have one of these that I can move into a room with me because most of the time when the power goes out, you're going to want to try to consolidate everybody into one room so you can kind of keep that body heat and keep the heat going with everyone. So having something like this is the first thing I recommend. Number one, if it's an earthquake or some sort of disaster where possibly gas lines have been disrupted, you wanna make sure that you have this to see if there's any carbon monoxide building up in the home and something that could actually harm you and you can't even stay in your home. So this is the number one piece of equipment that I would have in my emergency prep kit for keeping warm is a carbon monoxide detector. If you're going to be heating with propane or butane, one thing I would recommend that you keep on hand is something like this. This is a fire blanket. And I recommend it over fire extinguishers because about 80% of the people don't know how to use a fire extinguisher. And if they have one, many times it doesn't work or it's outdated and they can't get it to work. And that's no time to be finding that out. This always works. All you have to do is throw it over the fire and it will blanket it and rob it of oxygen and just basically put it out. I keep one in my kitchen, I keep one in my car, and I keep one in my emergency kit because that way, wherever I happen to be, I have one with me. So it's just so simple to use. Even children can use it. This is a great thing to have as some sort of fire blanket. Of course, whenever using an alternate heat source, you're going to want to use some caution. I wouldn't leave things burning while I'm sleeping or anything like that, but you do want to get a room warm if you don't have an alternate source of heat, like a fireplace or something. And for me, that means I'm going to be using something like this, which is a propane heater that has a propane tank. And for me this morning, when I took it out and tried to use it, I had a hard time getting it to light. And I realized that the can that I had didn't have much propane in it. So you wanna make sure you have spare bottles of propane on hand that can help keep you warm and you don't wanna be running out in a power outage. You're never sure how long that power outage is gonna be. So I like to keep a couple of tanks on hand in my garage so that way I have a way to turn this heater on and be able to get some heat into the room where we're going to be all consolidated. 
the next thing you're going to want is a paint screen. I know it looks a little weird, but I'm going to show you how I use it. This is a great option to be able to push more heat into your room. And that's by again, using this paint screen and a fan that's working with the heat coming up from the propane heater. This is making the blades run and push heat out into the room. So that way it'll push heat out further. You don't have to be huddled around something like this. And this has radiant heat here and this will push heat out into the room. So another great option to have, especially without power, this runs directly off the heat coming off of the heater. So as you can see, my propane heater is all set up and I have my paint screen attached to the top. This is gonna allow me to put on something like this kettle, which is going to help me get some hot water as well as put some humidity in the air. And speaking of humidity, you're probably going to wanna to get something like this, which is gonna have temperature and humidity readings for you because your thermostat is probably not gonna work because it's electric. So this will be able to allow you to read what the temperature is and how much humidity is in the air. So a word of caution, these paint grids come in a variety of sizes. For example, this is a one gallon grid right here. This works on my little heater. It's good for the fan. I don't know if I would put the tea kettle on it, but if you had a small tea kettle, that might work fine. I was using the two gallon one right here, as you can see, and it worked great for the heater or the tea kettle. And I had the five gallon one that I bought. It was just too big, it didn't fit on. So depending on which heater you have, you're just going to have to play around with which one of these grids is gonna work best for you. It's just something that if you needed to have that extra bit of fan or a heat, this is a great way to get a little bit of extra heat pushed into your room. If propane is your gig, you might wanna think about butane and using a butane stove like this is great because you can cook as well as put this little gadget on it that's gonna allow you to heat up your room. You can see it's turning red here and it's radiating quite a bit of heat. So in a pinch, you can use this to cook with and you can also use it to heat your room. Nothing says warmth like a nice cozy blanket, especially if it's electric. I know you're thinking, well, if the electric's out, you need, how am I gonna use it? Well, if you have a power bank, some sort of battery that can handle the wattage that this needs to heat up a blanket, it will work. You can then spread the blanket out on your bed, turn it on, get it warm so that it gets some warmth and get into bed. And you can either leave it on low or just get it warm enough so you can get in and stay warm and then maybe turn it back on a little bit later when it cools down. So it's just another option if you have a electric power source like a battery you know, power bank that you can plug this into. And it's a lot safer for those of you who don't like propane or butane or propane, this is a much safer source for most of us. But if you don't have that power bank, this isn't gonna do you any good. However, having a nice set of blankets to have to pile on top of beds is always a good option. Another great thing to have on hand are some hand warmers or warmers that you can put in pockets or boots. These are activated by air. So all you have to do is open a package up and in about 15 minutes, you're going to have some heat. These are great to put in your pockets, great to put in gloves or in slippers and shoes to help keep your feet warm. And you'll know when they're done because they're gonna get kind of hard like this and then you'll know it's been used up. But those are great to have. You could also use things like that to put into slippers. So I have a pair of down slippers that are just wonderful to sleep in because they're just so soft even. If I had to sleep in something like this to keep my feet warm, I could do that because they're just light and soft. But I can also still walk outside in them because they have that a rubber bottom and they're non-slip. I always keep a good pair of wool socks with my slippers, but then again, if my feet are getting really cold, I'm gonna take something like this, slip it inside my slippers, and this'll help keep my feet nice and toasty. I think almost all of us, unless we live in a really warm climate, have a winter coat, and those are great options to have, because if it is as cold inside as it is outside, you're gonna be wearing this thing inside as well, but you can also use it to put on your bed to help give you that extra layer of heat, and something like this that has a reflective material on the inside is going to help reflect that heat back down into the bed. So these kind of coats that have a reflective lining are gonna be much better at keeping you warm if you're running around in your house or sleeping at night. Once the power's out, we're gonna be able to use our phones for a while to make sure we can keep tabs on what's going on. But if our power starts to drain on our phones, we're gonna to need to charge them and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have some sort of batteries 
you know, backup power stations to charge those things. And there's a variety of them. I have few in my home, uh, quite a few different sizes in my home, but I also have things that do double duty like these. These are actually hand warmers and I've used them skiing or just being out in the cold. But what's really great is they are also power sources. These are each a battery so I can charge phones with these things or tablets. And uh, what I love about it is it's rechargeable. So if I have something like a larger power bank, I can charge off of this and recharge these little things so I can have little hand warmers available and also to keep charging my phone and things like that. They're also magnetic. So that way, if I want to put these like into a pocket in my coat separately like this or together, I can have something that's going to give me a really good heat source. And these work really well. Even on low, these things get really, really warm. They're also great to put in your shoes to get your shoes or boots warm before you put your toes in them. So a great thing to have. Also just even have in bed if you wanted to like, get a little bit warm while you're going to sleep and then turn them off and then save the battery for them. So another great thing, I keep a set in my car and a, a set in my emergency kit. So these are a great thing to have just because they're double duty. All right, so now you have a way to heat your room and possibly now even heat to get some water and food. So let's talk about that right now. As you saw in that video earlier, I showed you that I had a butane stove and I think that is a great thing to have on hand just so you can heat some water or even use it as a heat source if that's all you have room for in your space. So thinking of these options as how can I do double duty with things? Using a propane heater as a, you know, a water heater, using my little butane stove as a heater and something to cook with. And once you get that water all heated, you're gonna to wanna to keep it nice and hot and keep it in something like this, which is a nice insulated growler or thermos that's gonna be able to keep that water hot for a while. And even if you have it gone all day and it's still nice and warm, if you're gonna heat it back up, it's not gonna take as much fuel for you to heat it up, but these kind of things will keep water warm for hours. And of course, if you can get some warmth in you, it's gonna help keep you warm with your jackets and everything on. So having that warmth is having like a little hot water bottle on the inside. So making sure you have nice hot water available, whether it's for drinking or making food or even cleaning up. Speaking of stoves, let's talk about cooking. For those of you who have a gas line in your house and you're cooking with gas, that's great. If as long as that gas line's intact and you feel safe using it, that's great. If not, you're gonna to wanna to use an alternate source to cook with. And for me, that's butane. It's much safer to use inside your house for cooking. And it's also something very portable. So if I didn't wanna cook in my kitchen and I wanted to be in that room where we're all huddled together, I can move that little propane or butane stove in with me and be able to do some cooking and heating as possible. And when it comes to food, you're going to have food in your refrigerator. And if it's not gonna be a long power outage, I just say, keep your refrigerator closed and keep that cold air in there and just eat what you have on hand, snacks and things like that. If your water happens to be out for whatever reason, if your pipes are frozen and you had to turn your water off or water lines got disrupted, you're going to wanna to be able to cook something that is in this type of format, that is a bag meal, that all you have to do is add water to this. It's like a camp meal and you just cook it all up and it gives you pretty good nutrition so you can get some protein, fats, and carbohydrates and you don't have any dishes to do. So that's what's great for me is I wanna make sure that I don't have to waste water or heating up water to be able to clean dishes and things like that. This is great in those pinch times where you just need to get some sustenance, but you don't wanna be cleaning dishes. Another thing you're going to want to do is have an emergency radio because in case your phones can't get a signal, there might be a station on AM that's playing something further away that you're gonna be able to get news of what's happening in your area. And something like this is great because it also becomes a flashlight. It also has a little solar panel here that's a light. So that way if I can set it near a window, it'll trickle charge into it so it'll keep it going even if I'm running out of battery for a long time. And it also has a little wind up charging. So if I wanted my exercise, <laughs> I could wind up charge this thing and keep it going. So it also acts as a battery. So if I get enough power, this will also charge my phone and other things. So again, multi-purpose, 
gives you the news, lets you know what's going on in your area. So if they're telling you, hey, your power is going to be out for a long, long period of time, you might want to think about getting to a shelter at that point and seeing if there's some place where you can be a little bit more warm and get some food when your house may not be something that's going to keep you comfortable for any length of time. Of course, if the power's out, that means that the lights are out and you're going to want to make sure you have some light so you're not stumbling around in the dark or trying to cook in the dark with candles all the time. I've had candles. They only last so long and they make a mess. So I like to have some USB rechargeable and solar rechargeable lights. Something like this works great because I can set it outside if I need to to get it to recharge or even on a windowsill for some of the smaller things. Even like this one, this is actually a, I don't know if you can see the color. This changes colors on here into all different kinds of colors. And it's great because it's also solar charging. What I love about this one is it's colorful. It has all these little colorful beads that it goes out for about 10 feet. So it's a string of lights, but you can also just wind it up in here and have one light. It's also solar and USB rechargeable. This is a great light to have. It also kind of turns off on its own. So if you accidentally leave it on after about an hour, it'll just turn off. And as the battery gets lower, it'll start to turn off a little faster. So this is a great thing, especially for kids. They love colored lights. This is one of my favorite lights because it's dim and bright and moving. And it also has a really bright light, but it's also something I can hang. And it again is a series of string lights. This goes for about 20 feet. Now this one doesn't have colors in it, but when you want to have just some nice light, this is great for campsites and things like that, but it's just a nice little light to have. And it's also um, rechargeable by USB and it just winds all up. You just like that and it's all put away just like that. A great light to have. Another solar light is this one. I've shown you guys this before and it just pops open. It's made out of silicone. It's water resistant. It also is solar and USB recharging and it has colors in it as well. So you can have different colors or just white if you'd like just white light. So another great light to have on hand. Some of these make great lights to travel with. I travel with one of these because sometimes I just want some light, you know, in my room and not have a bright light overhead. So these make some great lights. Now I am not a fan of having candles burning a lot in my house all the time, especially sleeping and things like that. But I do like these candles right here. And these are rechargeable candles. I keep these in my bedroom and I use them every single night. And I'm telling you, they burn for sometimes four hours a night and I just keep going. I don't have to recharge these things for a long time. And when they do recharge, they recharge pretty quickly. But these are great things to have because they're going to give you some nice ambient light, something soft. So if you need something just at night when you're getting the kids down, this is a great thing to have. Um, I've had these for a couple of years now and they still work great. So a lot of the things I'm recommending to you are things that I've used, things that I have called my tried and true and that I would go back and buy them again. So I like to bring you things that I know work and I know will be useful to you and make you have the biggest bang for your buck. Just a solar powered battery that again can also act as a power bank, but, um, and it has emergency flashing on it as well, but this is super lightweight. It also acts as a little lamp. So you get a flashlight, a lamp, a little power bank, as well as a solar operated so that way okay, I, I can figure out how to turn it off i'm doing it okay okay it's off now <laughs> so anyway having a good flashlight around this is super lightweight so this is another great one to have that if you're going to have to throw it into a go bag this is nice and lightweight and again it's solar powered you can leave it in a window or something it'll get power on its own or you can recharge it just by plugging it into usb here you or you're someone in your family needs to use a medical device like a CPAP, you're going to want to get something like this, which is a portable power station. That's going to be able to help your CPAP run all night long. It's also going to have enough juice in it to juice up your phone or any of these lights or anything that you see behind me. So that way you can have things running that you need running during the power outage. And then once the power gets back on, make sure you recharge it. The other thing about batteries like this is you want to check them about every six months because some batteries, if they go completely down to zero, they won't even recharge. So you want to make sure that they will recharge. And if you see them, make sure you hit the button every once in a while 
just to make sure that there is a charge and make sure it's working. If something like a larger power bank like that doesn't work for you, you're gonna want something like this, which is a power bank that has a solar panel attached to it. What I love about this is I can put this in a window, you know, set it outside and it'll recharge the attached battery, which also has a little bit of a flashlight. So that way I can keep things like my iPad or my phone charge, at least keep me in communication or charge things like these lights just to keep me going until the power gets back on. Of course, if you listen to that radio and they're telling you, look, it doesn't look like you're gonna be getting power soon or things become a little more unstable and you're going to need to get to a shelter, you're going to want to have a go bag. This is my go bag and it stays packed all of the time, ready in case I have to evacuate my home and get to a shelter. I'm not gonna go through everything that's in this bag because I've already done that and I will link the video right up here so you can take a look at that and find out what I have in this bag and what you might wanna get in your go bag. If you happen to be in an area where your water gets disrupted or you're on well water and you don't have a backup to get your well to work, you're gonna to wanna to keep some water in your emergency kit so that you have about one gallon per person per day. I like this thing here. It is a three gallon container and I like it specifically because it's three gallon because it's one gallon per person per day, so this will get me through three days for me, and then there's one for David, but it also is lighter for me to carry. The five gallon ones are just too heavy to carry. So that way, if I had to leave my home and I had to get some water with me, I could throw these in the car and have some. They stack nicely. Um, let's see if I can show you this, it's kind of heavy. They stack nicely, and that way I'm able to keep them safely secured in my garage. And again, they have a handle. They also come with a spout. So that way I know that I have three days worth of water for me. So you want one of these per person in your family for three days. If it's gonna be longer, then you'll wanna have a little bit more. But again, if their water gets disrupted, and a lot of times if it's frozen pipes, or like I said, at our house, it was three times where someone hit a fire hydrant and it just disrupted the water supply. It was really ucky for a long time we had to use our emergency water. So always have some emergency water on hand. So many of us are used to using our phones, our tablets, our computers, and our TVs to entertain us all the time. And when there's a power outage, those aren't going to really be available, at least not for long if you use them all the time. So you're gonna to wanna to have a variety of games to have on hand that you can play as a family to help pass the time and keep everybody's mind occupied instead of just ruminating about what's going on. And that brings me to kids and the things that they can do to help you and to help themselves in the emergency situation and make them feel safe and comfortable. Kids take a lot of their cues off their parents when they're in situations like this. They'll be scared if you're scared. And if you're not scared, they tend to be a little more calm. And when the power's out and it's dark far earlier than what they want it to be, and they're not able to use their electronics, you're gonna wanna make sure that they feel like they have some things that keep them safe and a sense of control. And the number one thing for me is light. And something like this, I don't know if you can see this really, if it's lit up, but this is a USB rechargeable night light that has a magnet in it and it'll stick to anything like a refrigerator or microwave and it has metal plates you can put on the wall to put night lights on the wall because when that powers out all those night lights you have aren't going to work and even the ambient light you normally have from electronics and street lights are not going to work and it's going to be black as pitch and you want to have something like this which is a rechargeable magnetic night light and that can be put in the bedrooms it can be put in the kitchen and it's motion censored so it only turns on when something's going in front of it so this is a great thing to have this is another great light for kids this has colors in it so it's one of those that it's just kind of fun for them if they want to you know, go under a blanket and make it like a little tent. Make it a little more fun for the kids. Pretend you're camping out in your bedroom or living room 
and this has some nice light. It also floats, so if you want to put it in a bathtub or something, it'll float. It's waterproof. It's also solar rechargeable, so you can put it outside or in a window and it'll recharge, but you can also charge it just by plugging it into USB. So it's a great thing for kids. Um, it's one of those that it's great for camping. It reminds them of camping, and it's a great light to have. Even if you have to evacuate to a shelter, you might want some light of their own. Another thing of light is this, and I've shown some of you this, that I carry one of these around in my toiletries bag, some sort of glowing um, stick or light. This is activated by any light. You can put it under uh, a light from your cell phone, you can put it out in a window, and this will glow for eight hours at night. So if they're a little bit scared of the dark and they need something that glows, this is like a permanent glow stick. It'll work forever. I've had mine for 13 years and it still works. And I use them when I'm going to hotels to just put on doorknobs so I don't walk into doors in the middle of the night because I'm in an unfamiliar place. This is great because it has a little bit of a nice little glow without being too bright. And they also make them with little key rings that glow, which is great. So if they have something they want to keep track of, for example, a little favorite stuffed animal, they can put it on their little favorite stuffed animal to know where it is and carry it around. So these little things work great and they require no power. They're good for a really long time. And of course, having a water bottle and snacks of their own, something that they can keep track of, their own water and their own snacks, have those in their bags. They feel like they have a little bit of comfort with them, such small things to do, but such great things for kids. And some sort of small games like card games like this, depending on their age of what they can play with, so that it also keeps their mind occupied and it gets you to spend a little extra time with them. Use a little backpack so they can keep track of all their things. So that way, if you did have to evacuate, everything's all together and they have all the little things that make them feel safe in a backpack. I covered quite a few things in this video, so I will put a link in the video description and also pinned in the comments to my Amazon storefront where I will have a special page just for these items. It'll be winter emergency items, so you can pick and choose some of the things you want to upgrade your kit or make sure you start a kit for those winter emergencies. Now I know there are those of you out there that have some really good gadgets and you want to share those with us. Put those in the comments below. What are your favorite gadgets that you use for emergencies, especially for colder weather emergencies that are going to keep you warm and comfortable and fed? Put those in the comments below because I'm always looking for a new gadget to put on the show. All right, now that my house is a mess with all the Christmas and the emergencies gear scattered everywhere, I got to go get it put away. So until the next time, remember to juice life, drink the joy, keep life simple. Make sure you stay warm in those winter emergencies. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.